Kimochi. In the year 2012, from the hands of Studio TNK, High School DxD received its anime adaptation, gaining lots of traction and a loyal fanbase, making it, at the very least, a recognizable show for different reasons, which you can see in our video regarding the series. Regardless, and to the dismay of today's guest, Dakara Boku Echi ga Dekinai, or So I Can Play Echi, received a fair share of criticisms for being a high school DxD ripoff. While these two shows certainly share a lot of similarities, with a perverted protagonist and red-haired female lead, being a high school DxD ripoff might be one of the least of its concerns. Today, we'll cover what started as a mightily forgettable but decent edgy comedy to a completely confusing clown fiesta. From missing nipples to strange shift in direction, this is the Karaboku whatever. The Karaboku wa releasing the same season that brought us some gems like Sword Art Online and Hagure Yusha. Well, maybe not gems exactly, but they were definitely popular. The series was animated by Studio Phil, a company that usually takes a more slice of life series rather than the mix of ecchi and action we see in Dakara. But they did a pretty good, uh, decent job. There's really nothing particularly astounding in the technical aspect of the series. And we only have one major complaint that we'll talk about later on. Everything from sounds, music, animations, and voice acting, it's just there. Nothing truly memorable, but it works fine. For me, it was kind of a roller coaster of emotions. No! 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 Go, no! Go. Oh shit! But once it reached the top, the rail stopped and the car crashed, killing all my hopes for a decent product. While we agree that Takara shouldn't be taking that seriously, hence why we actually like the show for what it was. An inoffensive generic harem comedy, reality struck back. And whoosh, the anime took itself seriously, when the plot is about a human battery recharged by pervert energies. Going back to the initial point, the anime played itself as an average HD show, with a resemblance of a plot and the rest its comedy energy. Then the anime became some sort of overly serious action show to end with a drama, for some reason. While I had no expectations for the show, it managed to surprise me, at least at the beginning. But the direction and pacing of the second half leaves a lot to be desired. I'm honestly disappointed more than anything else. As it's been usual for me with this kind of shows, I came here with pretty low expectations. And, against all odds, I started enjoying it from the beginning. It's a run of the mill edgy harem anime with some fight scenes here and there, sure, but it started out with some simple yet entertaining world building and some very decent jokes. I truly enjoyed the series up to around episode 8, where this light hearted comedy turned into an action series. Wait, no, maybe it's, it's a sappy drama, maybe. No, no, that's not it either. What the hell is even that? What? It's over? The last third of Dakara left me really confused and very bored. Almost everything that sparked interest in me at the beginning disappeared and was replaced by a messy anime original ending that left me very dissatisfied. This anime was my very first watch ever, and it had a special place in my heart. But rewatching it after 10 years has made me realize that I had a very bad taste for anime back in the day. Still, I liked it back then, and I still somewhat like it today. At least the first 7 episodes. But why was the rest so bad? For starters, we established right away that we should watch it as what it is, an edgy harem comedy fiesta. And it was performing well in that regard, we were laughing and having an okay time. But then it happened, the comedy, the edgy, everything the anime standed for was fading away. Now, you could argue that we were so tunnel vision on this anime being an edgy comedy fiesta that we never gave it a chance anywhere else. But to that I'd say, that was not the case at all. I watched this shit show a second time with that in mind, trying very hard to be fair and to give it a second chance. But the conclusion was sadly the same. While the anime doesn't look great compared to other heavy hitters from the season, we have to consider that the show was probably run with a mild budget. 
plus studio feel can be tagged more as a slice of life studio. But even then, the anime looks decent enough. It's okay, it's okay! For half of the season, that is. The color palette is appealing to the eye, showing a contrast of colors between the characters and the environment. While backgrounds weren't complex by any means, they still look fairly good for the most part, so there was always something to look forward to. Animation-wise, the anime is great for what it is. Action sections have fluent animation, and while Lisara never had advantage in any fight for fan service purposes, the choreographies, angles, and attacks are all very competent. These usually manage to combine fan service with action quite nicely, with even some comedy into the mix. Nice. We have to mention that during the fighting sections, Green Reapers created some sort of reality marvel to isolate the fighting ground from reality so normal people don't get affected by the fighting while keeping the other world a secret. To contrast, these separate realities have some sort of filter, usually yellow or purple, to emphasize the fact that they are fighting in a different setting. While this takes away the colorful visuals from the anime, it serves the purpose of showing the viewer that characters are fighting in this reality marvel from the different world. I really hope that this filter is only used when necessary and not for like half the season, right? Wait. Of course, we have to talk about the edgy sections, which are, obviously, nicely animated. I think the first one with Lisara taking a shower looked a bit forced and weird. Kimochi. But other than that, it's what you would expect from a generic edgy story. It works, and that's fine. Okay. Now, one reason why we don't like the last five episodes is because thanks to the change in direction of the show, we went from these nice colorful visuals to fucking Mexico way. This yellowish filter looks bad, takes away the good colors, and makes the backgrounds hard to appreciate. While it's fine, I guess, in Green World, once the worlds are fused, everything looks like this. We can understand this artistic choice, but it feels overkill, when we already had other ways to differentiate both worlds, with Green World being more medieval with some alien aesthetics, and the Earth just with the usual modern setting. But hey, thanks to this yellowish filter, we can put some rails on some characters, Add a few Nepalis here and there, and... The sound department is honestly pretty competent. The sound effects are well placed during the fight, and the background music does its job by enhancing the emotion in the moments when it's used. However, aside from the ending and the opening, it honestly annoys me a little that I can't find the remaining soundtrack for the series when looking online. It's a shame, really. As for the story, it's pretty simple. We follow the story of Kaga Ryosuke, a high school student and pervert who meets, thanks to the red strings of fate, Lisara Restal, a Shinigami from a different world. As a means to survive in the normal world, Lisara makes a temporary contract with Ryosuke, using him as some sort of battery to fuel her powers. So, what's the deal? Lisara has one goal. For reasons which are explained later in the series, Lisara must find the one, a very strong source of energy, to make a contract with him or her and keep her world safe, by keeping the seal that divides both worlds unharmed. Also, Ryosuke has only 3 months left to live, so he helps Lisara in order to save himself from imminent doom. If there is a defining trait for our protagonist, it is that this motherfucker is a living battery. While he has a very low magic capability, he can recharge his energy with loot thoughts. Uh, take that as you wish. There isn't much more than that, at least for the first half of the show. The concept isn't very interesting, but it gives a clear goal to both characters, which is pretty much a means to justify the edgy and comedy, so it isn't there just because. Let's be honest, nobody watches edgy shows for the plot. If it has a good story, hell yeah. But if it doesn't, what were you expecting, honestly? The Kara doesn't take itself very seriously when it comes to the story, which is a respectable decision until they fucked up. You're ruining it! As long as the pacing works and the story isn't that idiotic, we give it a pass. Characters are the usual stereotypes from edgy shows. Nothing groundbreaking and as generic as it gets. So, let's take a look at our charming cast of characters. We got our generic male main character with no discernible trait aside from being your 
average perverted good boy. The childhood friend who has a crush on her main character but will never be the main romantic choice. The red-haired Sundere who clearly likes the main character because why not? Also the female lead. The refined girl who also happens to be a temporary antagonist for like 5 minutes. The cheerful idol with oversized boobs and over-the-top personality, also childhood rival of the female lead. The serious one who's cold as fuck and acts like a robot. And our generic badass antagonist, with a mythological weapon and a huge armor and the mask, so it's 100% clear that he's the big bad evil guy. Yeah, none of them stand out. They develop as you would expect based on their character traits. Lisara becomes more honest as time progresses. Kele becomes a supportive character. Iria becomes honest with herself and accepts Lisara as a rival and friend rather than a foe and so on and so forth. At the very least, they are consistent with their personalities. And they work on screen for the most part. They work, nothing special, but they make the anime watchable at the very least. Also, boob variety. Direction issues? We have mentioned it multiple times before. There's a big tonal dissonance between the first and second half of the series. Going from an itchy show with decent comedy and some battles sprinkled in, to a plot-heavy action show? With some nudity, of course. This 180 degree turn made what could have been an enjoyable, mindless show into a messy product that struggles to find its place. If you like the light-hearted first half of the show, well, tough luck, because if you keep going, you'll have to put up with a plot that gets progressively worse. Especially when the main antagonist gets dealt with three episodes before the show ends. Then we gotta deal with the train wreck that is the final arc, where we unveil a new battery, break some hearts, and enter some soul dimension because, spoiler alert, the protagonist fucking dies. Man, I'm dead. And it's supposed to be sad, I think. And even if for some reason you want to watch the series for the plot, you'll have to sit through the first half, where you'll get some sparse world building. While we were discussing the show for this review, we tried to answer a very simple question. What is the purpose of the show? Any given product has its purpose, for sure, but achieving such purpose is a totally different story altogether. For example, Rid of Hitler tried to be a dark fantasy revenge story, but failed to do so. Regardless of the success of accomplishing such a purpose, you can still understand the intention behind the creators. Going back to the Karabukuwa Echi, what is it exactly? This is number one. Is it promotional material? One of the reasons to make an anime adaptation of a manga or light novel is to promote its source material. A lot of these 12 episode shows usually end with some sort of cliffhanger to hook the viewer into buying the original source to follow the story to its fullest. It's awfully common to see comments begging for a season 2 on a huge number of anime, as I'm sure you have seen them when looking for the opening of any given show with lots of people complaining that the anime needs a season 2 or that the anime ended when the best part was coming. Hell, even we would love some follow-ups for those short 12 episode anime, but we can dream. So what about Dakara? Funnily enough, while the light novel continued the story for a few more years, the anime pretty much closed the story there, at episode 12. The conflict was resolved, everyone was happy and Ryosuke and Lisara began to date. The main antagonist died earlier than we expected, and the new quote-unquote antagonist pretty much gave the protagonist the best possible outcome for them. Just because. We haven't read the light novel, as this review only encompasses the anime adaptation, but from what we have researched, the story actually moves forward. The closure for the anime is anime only, closing the story just there, while also killing any chance for a second season altogether. So, does the anime work to promote the source material or even expand the franchise even more? Not really. 
with no conflict to move the story forward or any antagonistic force to oppose the main cast, the viewer has nothing to look forward to. While some curious people ended up reading the light novel or manga because they like the anime, it isn't such a huge driving force compared to a nicely done cliffhanger or a compelling narrative. This is number two. Is it an itchy comedy to kill time? When we were on the early discussions about the show around episode 2 or so, we arrived to the early and misguided conclusion that Takara Bokuwa was going to be a harmless harm story with no bigger scope than that. The anime was mostly self-aware of its nonsense. The comedy and characters worked for what we thought wanted to be a niche comedy about a perverted guy, and there is his history. However, one of us, like some sort of doomsday prophet, said, the anime wants us to take the story seriously. We dismiss this comment, saying that it is just a dumb comedy with lots of stits or whatever. Then, we go to episode 7.5, a totally unnecessary recap of the previous episodes. Well, we enjoyed the first half of the show as some sort of guilty pleasure, the story suddenly took a turn for the worse, with less ecchi, less comedy, and scenes that drag on for an eternity. We got really false character depth, such as Ryusuke getting PTSD in Greenwald, but a few episodes earlier, he almost got strangled to death, but look, no trauma, no worries, no nothing. He's back to his perverted self right away. The final arc of the show got awfully serious as well, showing the repercussions of the fusion of both worlds, but focusing on the psychological effects that this event had on Ryosuke, making the story unbearable to watch at times. Like we were watching a totally different show. Same, same, but different. So, is it a decent edgy show to kill time? Not really. Only half of the product offers you that. Then it becomes a false action drama thing. If you turn off your brain for the first episodes, like we did, you may get some good laughs and enjoy the edgy and fighting. But then it's a total drag to watch. Thesis 3. Is it even an edgy comedy at all? For half the season, sure, but the rhythm and nonsensical story catch up with the new deep direction of the show, so no, you don't get what you're looking forward to. Misguided marketing, direction issues, bad source material. We have too much for a show that gave us a glimpse of hope. Maybe it's just a combination of everything stated above. And no, it doesn't work as an edgy comedy, as the second half barely has edgy or comedy. Maybe that's why the franchise is called So I Can Play Edgy. Maybe we were in the wrong and didn't understand the message behind the series. Holy shit, we get it now! And by the end of the show, Ryosuke is running naked on the streets. The show fucking sucks. We really feel conflicted with this one. We honestly expected nothing with the intention of not taking the anime seriously and just laugh with the crappy story and enjoy the edgy and comedy, ironically or not. The anime managed to surprise us initially. So maybe So I Can Play Edgy could be, at the very least, a competent, edgy harem story to kill some time, but in the end it's a total mess. It had a competent start for what it is, but then attempted to be an overly serious action show and then a romantic drama. It isn't a full-fledged experience and we can't recommend a product that's decent at best, and only for the first half. We honestly recommend watching a different show, as the industry is oversaturated with these types of stories, so options are plenty. As for Dakara Bakuwa, uh, watch the first 7 episodes or bust. Only one question remains though, where are Kelly's nipples? Oh, uh...